what he said made a lot of sense, and that was there is a disconnect, and that, um, wait, was it him that said it? There was somebody on that panel that said when he was younger, he was in a room all the time with older men. So you would hear them talking. You would pick up this wisdom from these guys. But what's happening with this generation is they're only around their peers. Mm. And so no one has the foresight to know that when you put something down on a record, like, why'd you say that? You can think of something better than, better than that in that area right there. Or, you know what, that's taking that a little too far. Like, no one's looking out for the best interests of anyone else. It's almost as if they hear it and they go, oh, yeah, that's the most outlandish thing that you can say. <laughs> and in fact, it makes no sense. It just rhymes with another word. Go, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, you got everybody in the room that's going to tell him yes, yes, and no one's going to challenge him to say something, uh, you know, more intelligent. Or the older men, this is the problem I have, the older men are scared of young men. Mm -hmm. And that, that's when you're going to have a problem. If an older man, if you're scared of a young boy, like my son now is 23, I'm telling you, if he walked in here, you would think he's cool, Jay. He's diesel, he's put together, he's uh, about to be Border Patrol. And if he did something crazy, I would whoop that ass just like when he was five. <laughs> but if you have older men, like when I go to these young guys, we catch up in, in the. In the me and um, the brat did a show, and Naughty did a show, and it was old school and new school in Texas. And we're sitting there, and there's all these young guys, and they're coming in and talking, and we're talking. And I know they understand what I'm trying to say, and they're not even trying to disrespect me. It's, it doesn't make sense to disrespect me. Because I'm still Brooklyn, and there could be consequences. But I mean, <laughs> at the same time, we, we, we try to get, because I want them to have an old school. I, I so want them to have an old school. But they're making microwave music that might hit for two, three months, nobody remembers. Does anybody care about the safety leg now? No. <laughs> you know, in 20 years, are you going to be able to book that? No. You know, but Treat Em Right is 25 years old. I understand it's 20 something here, 26, 27 years old, or whatever. It, it, it's what? Patty LaBelle is singing songs four decades old. That's what I want for them, because this genre, this genre to me is like a fraternity. It doesn't make a difference when you were inducted, but you're all one thing. And the media, people paint it with that one brush anyway. They never say, oh, I don't like new school hip hop. They say, I don't like hip hop. You know, period. You know, oh, I, I, I remember uh, Kwame, a good friend of mine, Presented something for the NAACP, and they said, "Oh no, no, we don't, we don't do it." That doesn't make sense to me. When most of your people sitting there are fans of hip hop, but they wouldn't know. We, I, I interviewed Denzel Washington here at this station. He was, he was on the air with us a couple of weeks ago. He knew more about hip hop than me. He told me about when he first seen the first guy DJ, and he remembered, he remembered my first record. He remembered the studio I put, produced it. Because that's. What, he still comes from that era, but that big paintbrush of now, oh hip hop, no, that, that feels, it's, it's, it, it's wrong to me. And I don't really think that those young people mean to hurt that genre, but they just don't, they don't think there's an alternative. 